Okay, so recently, only about like two or three weeks ago, I did a review of this product right here. This is the TK Lamp Flashlight Tester, which is a small, inexpensive integrating sphere designed for hobbyists to take measurements of flashlights. I think it's a super cool product. It's one I was really excited about. Of course, they provided this product for this review. They didn't pay for it otherwise. But just after I uploaded that video, TK Lamp reached out to me and asked if I would like an upgraded version, which I was definitely interested in. So I packed it up and shipped it out to him. And about a week later, I got this. It's the exact same sphere that it was before, but now the firmware has been upgraded and it includes some really cool new features. So I just wanted to make this short video to show them off. Let me just get that in focus, there we go. So you'll be familiar with this box. Um, it's the exact same one again, physically. They've included a couple of new things in here. So the first one I wanna show off, uh, this is just an extended cable. So this is a uh, like 10 meter, 30 foot cable for the uh, candela meter. It's a lot of flashlights. The beam, at least really throwy flashlights, the beam won't converge until sometimes pretty far away from the front of the light. Um, and a meter might not be enough for some of those super throwy flashlights. So this is just a good way to get that sensor even further away and get a more accurate reading. It could also just be a convenience thing, you know, with the positioning of this. So that's kind of cool. The other thing that's new is this sticking out of the side here. This is a USB port, and that's so I can take runtime data out of this. So I'll show you that. That's really cool. What's really interesting is in the software here. So turn this guy on. Uh, it looks a little bit different up here. So we've got our Lux reading, we've got our Lumen reading, and if we tap right up here at the top, this is just a Lux reading, and you can see, so it'll tell us our Candela and our Lux, and then this is just the, the Lumen reading, which was on the previous version of the firmware. Then we just have a home button that we can tap. So um, you can see right here it says TK Lamp V8.0, so that's the newer firmware, and I have the same recalibration abilities. This is what the recalibration screen looks like. So I can actually take a note of what the initial calibration number was. I can recalibrate this off of a different source if I have one, uh, but I can also revert those changes. So that's a nice thing, you know, if there's concerns about accuracy. So the first like big change here is actually the maximum output that this is capable of recording. So you'll note that the last time I did this, I was only able to get about 12,600 lumens, but now we have increased our maximum uh, lumen rating. So this is the Mach uh, GT4695. This is a very bright flashlight. And I will just stick this in here. And let me go to lumens real quick. Okay, there you go. You see lumens right there on the screen. Now if I turn this on and blast it, you can see we're going all the way up to about 28,900 there. And of course it's going to start dropping. Um, they're telling me that this is now has a maximum reading of about 35,000 lumens. Now the retail version of this is gonna max out at about 25,000 lumens. Now I do wanna see exactly what the limit is. So I got my X75 here. This is about 80,000 lumens on turbo. I'm gonna make sure that you can actually see the lumen rating there. And of course this isn't gonna be an accurate reading because it doesn't. it's too big for the aperture, it doesn't fit, but um, this will be plenty bright enough to max it out. So we can see exactly how bright we can go here. So about 9,000, and then if we just jump it up to turbo. Yep, 34,568 is the maximum reading that this can do. Um, so that's actually very close to their claimed maximum output of 35,000. And again, that's extremely high. I think that's more than double of the previous maximum limit that this had. So I'm actually really happy to see that. That's a nice feature, but there's probably an even bigger, more interesting feature here. So if we just tap on the graph, now you can see we have a runtime graph measurement. So the new data logging feature here is very convenient, but it's not quite as easy to use as you would hope. You do have to have some tech savvy for it. So Tiki Lamp's official instructions, it's on their GitHub page. It's for Mac OS, and then there are some notes for the Linux installation, which in theory should have been very simple, but you know, it never is. Um, so it took me about 40 minutes between all of the troubleshooting, installing new software, fixing things. But I was able to get it to work. And once you have it installed, uh, it's a fairly straightforward system. So once you've finished your runtime test, you go to this data transfer mode on the TK lamp, you prime your machine, and then you can uh, have it receive the data that comes from the test. So not too bad again once you get it set up. 
So this is the runtime screen right here. You can see you can start and stop your recording up at the top, or you could just press the graph. That'll work as well. Now you can see right here, it'll show our sampling time, which is 200 milliseconds, and uh, the amount of time we have for our total graph. If we press the settings button, uh, we can adjust a bunch of settings and we can adjust our sampling time. So if we increase this to just say, I don't know, put a, a massive number, it'll cap out at about 60 seconds. So we can hit save and then exit. And now this will do one sample every 60 seconds. And you can see we have our full 600 minute uh, runtime possible here. So that would be how you extend your runtime slash change your sampling rate. And then down here, we also have a timer. Basically, this just shows you how much time has elapsed. This is not connected to the runtime test at all, which is kind of unfortunate in my opinion because it means you cannot set this to automatically stop recording when this timer runs out. Uh, I really wish it would do that. So when you're done with your runtime test, you just hit transfer data up here. You'll get 10 seconds and then you enter your command here on the computer. And then that has been entered. So once this times out, you'll see that the data transfer, the data transfer will start and uh, boom, we're done. So I just hit exit. Now, part of TK Lamp's instructions here includes uh, this process for making a directory and everything. So if you just follow this, you should be good to go. It's pretty straightforward. So the data has been transferred as we just saw here. And if we go down to our directory right here, TK Lamp, and open that, you can see that we have all of the data. Um, so it'll, it'll be dated when you initially get it. And I just renamed these so I can organize them. But that's how that works right there. So this is a CSV, and you can just transfer that to you know, whatever software you want to use to process it. So the thing you should know about this is that it can only record up to 600 data points. Um, so you're not able to run a super long runtime test and have high resolution at the same time. You get one or the other. So if you want to do a turbo runtime test, you can have high resolution, but it will only run for a few minutes. You can have it run up to, I think, 600 minutes maximum, but that's going to be at low resolution. So you, you adjust the sampling time is essentially how that works. So I will show you what that looks like. In order to actually record here, you can clear data and then press up here in the corner and it'll say recording. Then you can stick your light in here and it will start actually measuring and you can see that on the plot there. And here on the left, you can change your uh, Y axis readout. So that's just a display for you. Um, it doesn't change how the data is actually recorded. Although it did take a while to actually set this up so I could transfer my data. Once that was done, um, I think this is actually a very good simple, easy to use system. You know, when you get the CSV off of this, it already has uh, clearly labeled Lumen, Lux, and Candela because you can log all three of those. It's just a really pretty simple process. Something else that you also should be aware of is that there's no automatic stop for recording. You have to manually stop and start your runtime test. So that means if you're running a runtime test like this, you know, you have to actually stop it before you time out. Otherwise, your, your data is going to be cut off when you actually go to import this. So you're not going to have everything you need. If you're doing like a long runtime test, you have to make sure that you don't forget about it. Because if you do, then it could, it'll just keep going and you'll lose however much of that, you know, you were absent for. So that is something that I find quite annoying. That's a limitation you do need to be aware of. And right here, you can see I'm actually about to time out on my graph. So I'm going to pause that. And now I could transfer this over to my computer. Yeah, just be aware of that. For that reason, I'm going to continue using ceiling bounce to do runtime tests because I can essentially just leave it unattended and I don't have to worry about this, this timeout thing where I, I have a lot of data points I can actually work with. Oh, this light is hot. Okay, so I do have some thoughts on this. Um, for one, I think it's super, super cool that this is physically the same unit, but they were just able to upgrade the firmware. And if you're going to be buying this now, you'll actually be getting this updated version. You're going to have more features uh, available to you. And I think that's really awesome. I think it's really awesome that it has runtime graphing features. I think, the, of course, the increased limit is awesome. As I showed, there are some issues with the data transfer. Um, the graphing, it's still not perfect. Honestly, I, I would like to see more updates before this ships or at least the ability to continue to update it after it ships. And that's one thing that I don't know about this is if you, the consumer, the buyer, if you are able to update this yourself or if it has to be done by TK Lamp. So that's something that remains to be seen. 
The other thing is that, of course, this one has a max of 35K lumens. They Again, they told me the retail unit is 25. I don't know why mine is higher. I guess because it's a review unit. Um, I kind of wish that they were just all at 35K. It seems kind of a bummer to pay, you know, 400 bucks and not get the maximum that this is capable of. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, this was a simple video, nothing fancy. I just kind of wanted to show this off because I thought it was really cool. I'm really excited about these new updates because it's going to make what was already a very useful tool for me and make it even more useful. So long as the flashlights fit and so long as their uh, maximum output fits within this thing's limitations, uh, this is what I'm going to be using. And if anybody out there is interested in getting into reviewing or even just testing flashlights, again, this is expensive. It's still expensive as it was before, but uh, I think this is a really great option. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how to make this like a super exciting video. I just think this is an awesome product. So once again, I would like to thank TK Lamp for sending this to me, for upgrading it, and for offering this to the community. If you're interested, there will be a link in the description. And so yeah, if you do get this, I hope it serves you well, and I hope that it gives you accurate measurements until the end of your days. Good lucks.